Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel Tech with Mega, and I hope you all are doing well. So in today's video, we're going to understand some of the basic and most important Kubernetes kubectl commands for pods. So here, what we're going to see. So first of all, we'll try to understand how we can set up a mini cube cluster in our local uh, Windows laptop. And then we need to see how we can set up a Docker desktop. Finally, we'll see what is Kubernetes, what is pods, what are, uh, what are kubectl commands. So we'll try to see some of the important kubectl or Kubernetes commands that will help us in order to debug the pod or you want to describe the pod. So this, is, this video would be a hands-on and we'll try to run the commands and see the output of it. Okay, so our first step is that we require a mini cube cluster. So a mini cube cluster is nothing but one node cluster that is very much helpful when you are actually learning Kubernetes or trying something by yourself in your personal laptop. So in order to set up a mini cube cluster, you just need to come to my channel and here I have already created a video that will tell you how to set up a Kubernetes cluster that is mini cube in your local machines, that is your Windows. And if you click this, this will show you the procedure how to do it and it's just a 10 minutes video you can watch this and um, it will help you to set up the mini cube cluster and then it would be up and running and we can continue with the other kubectl command so the next thing is uh, you need to have a docker desktop up and running so here you can see that i have my docker desktop which is up and running and you can see the engine is running so if you do not have docker desktop in your laptop just go to the google and uh, type docker just type docker desktop uh, install windows so since if your machine is windows or mac or whatever it is just come here uh, click the official documentation and from here you can easily install the docker desktop because docker desktop is like uh, very important if you are uh, if you are creating a docker file containerizing the image doing a pull push so it's basically a very essential thing um, in the part of uh, devops life so if you if you are a devops engineer if you are want to learn devops docker desktop is one must prerequisites that you need to have hi everyone so let us see one of the simple kubectl command that is used to create a pod i'll show you i have a mini cube uh, cluster so let me show you the status for that. So here you can see that my minikube, which is a one node cluster, is up and running. And if I show you the pods, the command is kubectl get pods. I have only, uh, right now I have only one pod, which is in crash loop back of error. So let us create a simple pod with the help of the kubectl command. So in order to create a pod, you need to run the command that is kubectl run provide the resource name so here i would give the resource name as nginx pod this is the name of my pod and i want to uh, create this pod uh, with the image that is nginx so i'll give hyphen hyphen image equal to and uh, the name of the image that we will be using is nginx and just hit enter so here you can see that it is giving a message that pod with the name of nginx pod has already been created. Now let us run the kubectl get pod again and here you can see nginx is in ready state and it is up and running. So this is how you can create a simple pod with the help of this kubectl run command. So okay, so now we created a pod. Uh, with the help of just a uh, kubectl run command. Let us see how we can create a pod when we have a YAML file, as you can see here. So Kubernetes uses YAML file as uh, an input for the creation of objects. So these objects may be in the form of pod, they may be a deployment YAML file, they may be a, you can say, service YAML file, or it might be a replica set and many other uh, creation of objects so all of this can be done with the help of the yaml file and we can use the kubectl command to deploy them so every every file that you will see right every yaml file that you will see will follow this similar structure so first is it will have an api version it will have a kind it will have a metadata and it will have a spec section so these four are like a common thing that you will see in uh, most of the yaml files so let us understand uh, in this pod.yaml file so this is a simple pod.yaml file 
model where we are using nginx as our image and the first section is api version so what is this api version api version will specify the kubernetes api version that you are using to create the object okay so in in case since since the uh, this pod this yaml file is indicating that we are going to create a pod yaml file that's why we are giving it as v1 let me show you one more example if you are creating a kind of service I mean service.yaml file then it would be v1 if it's a replica set it will be apps.v1 same way for deployment it will be again apps.v1 so this is the example uh, way where you can define the kubernetes objects so as i said that since we are using uh, kind as pod the api version is one so that's why we have written the kind as pod pod so kind is nothing but this section will actually specify the type of kubernetes resource that you are deploying so ideally it will refer to the uh, you can say the type of object that we are trying to create okay then we have the metadata so metadata is nothing but it contains the information about the object like we have names and i'm giving the name as nginx mega so you might give any names there might be labels and other uh, parameters that we can define within this metadata object itself finally we have spec as the word suggests spec means specifications so specification is nothing but uh, like uh, you are actually specifying what kind of resource or what kind of object you are trying to deploy that's why we are giving the container spec also we are saying this is the name uh, this is the image this is the port that we want uh, to use so this is nothing but a simple pod.yaml file where we are deploying an nginx image and the container port that we define here this will indicate the container and like which which would be listening to the port that is 87 so now let us go ahead and uh, just apply this uh, pod.yaml file and see what happens okay so now that we created this simple pod.yaml file it has been saved in my folder that is kit demo let me open my git bash and go to that location so i am already in that location where i have the file so here you can see that i have my pod.yaml file so in order to um, what you can say um, create the pod, create the pod you need to run the command that is kubectl before that let me see what pods i have kubectl get pods okay so i have only two pods one is running one is crash loop back let us create it so kubectl apply and uh, i'll put since i'm going to create a pod with the help of my yaml file i'll give hyphen f and the file name the file name is pod.yml that you can see it here itself let us give it enter and now you can see a message has been deployed as pod nginx mega has been created because if you go to the visual studio code i'm giving the metadata the name of my pod to be nginx let me go back and let us run the kubectl get pod which will list the uh, pods that are present so here you can see nginx mega is up and running which has been this has been created with the help of yaml file and this got created with the help of just the command okay so this is one example where you can create the pods now let us try to uh, understand few more kubectl command so if you see kubectl get pods i have this uh, pods available and if i want to see more information here you can see information as name what is the uh, rare like whether, whether the images that how many images we have deployed whether it is one on one ready or not the status it is showing res uh, whether how many times we have restarted and the age of it let us try again kubectl get pods and give hyphen o and give uh, the our uh, argument as wide so now you can see here that it is giving us more information information like ip on which node they are running another nominated node and readiness gate so these are certain more information that will help us when you are actually debugging a pod that is uh, stuck in some any issue or any kind of crash to back of error so this is one command that you can use there is one more command that is kubectl get pods and uh, that is hyphen o and the name is uh, yml okay i think i gave i missed a here okay so now here you can see that it is giving the yaml format of the file so here you can see there is api version as i said that yaml file starts with this this is the one i have three pods so this is one pod 
uh, information then I would have one more pod information as you can see here and there is one more finally at the top right so this is the way where you, if you want to see the output of the pod in the yaml format you can see it in this way and there is one more way where you can actually check the output of the command that is we tried uh, hyphen o yaml right let us try one more that is json format so json format will help you to give the output of your pod in json format as you can see here if you want to check the status of the pod so this is also one way where you can actually um, what you can say check the status of the pod now let me clear it and try to uh, if, if I want to describe the pod so how, what I can do I can do kubectl get pods let us see the pods okay now I can do kubectl describe and give the pod name my pod name is nginx maker okay what I missed here okay error the server doesn't okay uh, I missed the pod kubectl describe pod Oh, sorry, it's not uh, this. It's the spelling mistake, I think. N I N G G I N X, right? Yeah. Okay, fine. So here you can see that this is actually describing my pod. When it is describing my pod, it is telling me what is the name, what is the namespace in which it is deployed, what are the nodes, when it started, what kind of container it you are using. So you know what happens sometimes your pod might be stuck in uh, an issue. Like when you see the status of the pod, it is trying to pull the image but that image is not available. So from here, you can get an idea, okay, what kind of image it is trying to pull. You can see a container ID, image ID, and what is the status. So this is the best way to debug your pod so usually when we come across any uh, pod issue we first command that we try is kubectl describe and try to see what is happening in it events are a better way which will help you to give much more information here sometimes you might get that it's not able to pull the image so this will anyhow indicating that either the image name that you have specified in your yaml file is wrong or that image itself is not available in docker hub or jfrog artifact from wherever you're trying to pull so in this way you can correct it and redeploy your uh, pod okay so now if you want uh, the outcome of your pod or you can say um, whatever is the outcome whether it is in yaml format or whether it is in json whichever format you want to save it save it and uh, save it in your local uh, wherever you're running the command so that it it, it will help you for the further uh, investigation so what you can do is first of all we we'll get the pod kubectl get pods so the command is kubectl uh, get pods and the name like i want the output or you can say whatever is the status of this pod to be saved in a file so what i'll do i'll just give the name that is nginx mekha and uh, I want the output to be saved in the in the YAML format, so I'll write it YAML, and I'll give the name for my file. So the name of name of my file will be nginx uh, status mm, nginx status dot YAML. Okay, just hit enter. Okay, I I think I made a mistake in the command. It's kubectl get ports hyphen o YAML. That's what I have done it. Okay, okay. I missed one small command here. Let me run that. So hyphen O, you need to give this arrow key. Okay, now it will get saved. If you do ls, it is showing that the file has been saved here. And if you do, uh, what you can say, a cat of it, nginx, you can see the output is already saved and you can use it for further investigation, right? let me just delete my file again i don't need it rm minus rf nginx okay it got deleted so this is uh, uh what you can say the command that will help you to save the output of your pod in whichever format you want it you can provide it and save it and use it for the further investigation okay so let us see a few more commands that are actually helpful so the command is kubectl version so this will give us the version that we are using in uh, our, um, what you can say, the Docker desktop that is running here. 
so this is the version that we have here so not this one where is my docker desktop yeah here okay this is the way where you can get the exact version of it and if you want to know the clusters information then you can also try kubectl that is cluster hyphen info in our case it's a mini cube cluster right so that's how you can uh, get the information about it so it's nothing but it will display the endpoints information about the master and services in the cluster then if you want to uh, get some uh, what you can say configuration information about the cluster so you can type kubectl uh, config and it is i think view yes let me see yeah so here you can see the configuration information about the cluster that we are using so these commands right now i'm having only one cluster that is minikube but imagine in a company uh, like you're working in a project so ideally there won't be a single cluster there will be like around like more than 20 30 clusters will be there if it's a very big project and there might be uh, namespaces within that and people might be working so that time these kinds of command will help you to give the information okay what has happened to that cluster is it loaded with lot of uh, pods running in lot of spaces have been occupied so it's a best way and a good way to start your debugging okay and we also have uh, one more command like kubectl api version okay so i think i missed okay yeah s i missed it correct so this will give us a list of api versions that are available and uh, then if you want to see see if you do kubectl kubectl get pods this will give us just the information about the pods so if you have certain uh, deployments certain replica sets and many other services all these things if you want to see everything in a single uh, command you can just do kubectl get all uh, sorry not app it is all uh, then type hyphen hyphen all hyphen namespace in my case i am not sure how many namespaces are there let us uh, see fine okay so here you can see uh, ideally these three are, are the pods that are running in default namespace there are other pods also are running in other namespaces so it will give you all the pods that you have in all the namespaces running if you have any kind of deployments replica sets so i don't have much uh, what you can say uh, deployment done here i have deleted few of them so in this way in if you're working in a company if you're working in a project it will actually give you a lot of information in this way it's it's very easy for you to understand so now yeah, the, since we are learning i have only three pods imagine in a company there won't be three pods there would be like plenty of pods running and if you want to visualize everything uh, in a single uh, command this is a best way to visualize it okay and uh, what else we have yeah one major command i forgot uh, let me get the pods again kubectl get pods so we have if you want to check the Mm, logs of the pod just type kubectl log let us try uh, get the logs of this pod python python pod yeah so uh, this pod is having some issues but ideally this is a pod that is having i have written a docker file where it is actually a python code is there and it is actually um, like summing two numbers 10 and 20 is 30 so that is what is the log of it and uh, what else i have uh, okay let us do one last command i think kubectl get nodes okay so here you can see i have only one node that's why i told you right minikube is a one node cluster so it is giving us just this information if you want uh, if you like as uh, i'll take again the same example in a company you won't have only single node there will be many nodes up and running and that can give you a much better idea about uh, what is happening which pods are running in which nodes there are certain commands that can help you with that and uh, kubectl get pods let me get the pod again if i want to delete a pod so what i'll do kubectl uh, delete and let me delete uh, this pod nginx okay nginx mega let us delete this one right so it will take some time and it will delete it if you do kubectl get pod again now it has been deleted so these are the certain commands that actually uh, what you can say help us uh, when you are deploying something when you are creating uh, pods when you're when you're actually working with kubernetes so i hope 
So that was it about some of the Kubernetes commands for you can say kubectl commands for pods. So whatever uh, commands that we have tried and um, uh, tried to run it and get the output of it, all these commands I'll accumulate it and I'll put it in the comment section so that you can directly get it from there. And I hope uh, this video was helpful. Uh, stay tuned for more upcoming videos from my end and do like and subscribe my channel. Thank you for watching.